So leading on from the sit-down interview that we've just previously had, we're going to have a little tour of the club now, a little walk walk around with with, with Tom uh, and look at some of the imagery which which you'd, you'd actually toured the club with me just previously before we did the interview uh, and, and some of the images are quite striking. Uh, some of them I'm ignorant about because I didn't know Frank Zappa who that was so I'm going to be I'm going to be crucified in the comment in the comments there for this is on girls on YouTube but uh, I thought we'd have a walk around and just uh, if I could pick one or two of the ones that really stand out for me or any ones that you would specifically want to mention we could we could talk about so I thought we'd start here because this is such a vibrant colorful image and and uh, 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 and, and I again I didn't recognize who they were so if you could just for the viewers who probably know and I don't, it's just me. Uh, that is the greatest disco funk band on the planet ever, Chic. Chic. Uh, with Bernard Edwards and Nile Rogers. Obviously, everyone knows Nile Rogers now, but that's kind of before when he was with Chic. And uh, that's the original lineup uh, from the 70s that recorded hits like Good Times, La Freak, I Want Your Love. Uh, you know, a massively influential band, a massive part of my youth. And uh, the, as you walk in the downstairs club, it's the first thing you see. So it's kind of at the very heart of World Headquarters is that feeling that soul funk disco mm. enjoyment liberation decadence kind of vibe yeah. and so that's what that sums up and that was uh, painted by a girl who worked here in the 90s uh, Sinead Right. And it's one of her many masterpieces in the club. Right, fantastic. Um, and I should mention, this is this is like the first floor of the club. Is that right? Are we on like the main floor. We're on the ground floor. Yeah, this is the right. gr ground floor. There's two floors. This is the downstairs floor. Right, fantastic. Well, should we have a little walk? Walk on. We're gonna have a little walk down to the uh, the, the, the main bar here. We're gonna, walking along and just watching as we as we go. So we're going to Quite scan messy. across. Yeah, yeah, and that's there's my bag on that. <laughs> yeah, half of that's mine. So we're going to just pan down some of the imagery on here. Uh, quite some disturb for me personally disturbing imagery on this on the second shot there. Um, we have uh, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, uh, which that's that's an image I hadn't hadn't seen before. Uh, it is. Can we look? Let's sit on that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I do apologise. Can you say again? I missed you on the microphone, Tom. That's one of my favourite images of uh, the two of them because it was taken the day after Muhammad Ali beat Sully Listen to win the world title. Oh, right. And it's also taken the day after I was born. Fantastic. I love that. And that was, was that, was it 68? No, it was 60, uh, 64. 64. I was a little bit out there. And that was the first time he, he fought Sonny Liston. Was that correct? Yeah, the, was the time when he, when he whooped him and he, you know, when everyone said he whooped him. Yeah, but the anchor punch. The anchor punch, I think you called it. Yeah, called it. It's brilliant. And then stage yeah absolutely so this is interesting as we're panning around so we have um I, I don't, uh, not monkeys but i don't know is it baboons like red baboons or uh, something uh, japanese macaques I, I was way off <laughs> they, they, they live uh, high in the mountains in japan right and they warm themselves in in, right. in the sort of in the volcanic pools right. and they have a very complex society very mm -hmm. complex society indeed right. and they're just they're just you know there are ancestors aren't they but you know, they're, they're yeah. part of the same uh evolutionary ladder that, we're, that we are on as, as homo sapiens, you know, and it's just a different community, you know, probably having their little nightclub on the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> their own World HQ. It's interesting, the bottom, so we've got, a, um, I'm thinking a bit, is it a baby rhino or is that my ignorance again? That's your ignorance again, it's a tapir, tapir from right. South America. They're like, a, they're like a large horse pig type animal with a big snout that right. eats vegetation. Okay, interesting. So what, why did you choose that particular animal? Uh, because I like it and right. because I think it, it represents... It, it allows what you just did there to happen. People mm. go, what is that? What is that? And that mm -hmm. in itself is, begins a conversation. You yeah. know, the idea is that art, will, art should engage people and people mm. should wonder about it. You know, why as a nightclub have we got macaques and tapirs on the wall? Mm. Well, you should maybe ask yourself why other nightclubs don't have that, given the world we live in and the rate of the mass extinction taking mm. place. You know, we need to raise people's awareness and people's consciousness. And even in nightclubs, that's to me, that's perfectly appropriate. Oh, absolutely. I totally agree. I mean, we should highlight as well that you have the World uh, Wildlife Federation, who, who myself and my son are, are, are being past supporters of, um, so, so supporting wildlife and, and, and the uh, protection of wildlife that's endangered or, or otherwise. And, and the idea that you're in a club and you see that logo, it's, you know, you're supposed to, it's supposed to just register somewhere. Mm. You know, it may be subliminal, but it's supposed to register somewhere. It's supposed to mean something. Everything on the walls in here has a, means something and has a purpose yeah. in, the, in the goal of how we want ourselves to be presented and how we want people to think about the world as opposed to just thinking about it the way society normally serves it up to them, you know? Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, my, my, my marine biology is more astute than my land base. So if we could, we could have a discussion on sharks, I would be able to... So it would seem. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But next time, I'll be able to come back and, 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 and know what these, these are. So we're, gonna, we're going to track around and move upstairs. Oh, actually, just before we do, we've got some great images on the, just on the top, and we, and we shouldn't forget on the, on the corner. So could you just tell us a little bit about the, um, the images that we have on the, on the top here and just some of the characters? These are some of the really powerful women that I, want to, I wanted to highlight in the club. There's the young Jermaine Greer, uh, Donna Summer, Joni Mitchell, Angela Davis and Nina Simone. Mm. And that was because I realised a few years ago when I was doing murals, I was doing new murals, I thought, hang on a minute, I haven't got enough women up in here. Because mm. we've got a lot of murals of men and we haven't got a lot of murals of women. So we have got a programme whereby we're going to start, uh, there's a few women I've got in mind where we're going to do m more female ones. Because I want it to be a balance. I want it to reflect society. I don't want it to be... Uh, I mean, it's maybe overthinking it, but even in murals, I don't want it to be too too male heavy, you know. And over time, we will address that balance. Right. But they are, you know, what I consider to be really, really inspirational women, mm -hmm. who have shaped, I don't know, all sorts of society in many, many, many ways, you know. Yeah. And uh, and they're people who I want, you know, I want young girls who come in here to go, oh, who were they? Mm -hmm. And then they, oh, well, that, that's that's you know, the idea is that it opens a conversation again, and it, it's just the de decorative art. It's very high quality decorative art. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's painted straight on the walls. But the idea is that it just keeps those images alive and keeps th those people alive in people's minds, you know. Because I think it's very important to try and address the extremely patriarchal nature of modern society. And we've maybe been a bit slow in doing that in terms of our murals, but we're on point. We'll be there. Mm -hmm. You know, check us out in 10 years' time and see what we've got, you know. That's interesting. And then Martin Luther King at the bottom there? Yeah, yeah. Martin Luther King, when he was, when he'd just been arrested. Because uh, I, I think a lot of the images of Martin that you see is always painted as being very angelic. And society in general has sanitised him to be on oh, Martin. He was all about peace and love. But Martin Luther King was a revolutionary. You know, he believed in, you know, equality for everyone, which at the time he was preaching that was an absolutely radical philosophy. And, you know, he was arrested and incarcerated for that. And when I think of Martin Luther King, I don't think of him as a religious person. I think of him as a revolutionary, which is how he's portrayed there. Yeah, it's interesting. And as we discussed before, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but we spoke about the, the ethos of the club, that it's about bringing the real characters to life. It's about the layers that real people have, because even when figures are painted, you know, say by the media, uh, and, and, and sometimes for, 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 for um, you know, purposes of, of, of creating an image, uh, f f you know, with, 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 with in, in, in certain cases, specific or good reason or, or necessity, but to actually realise that there's layers of characters underneath that, that we're all human beings at the end of the day. Yeah. So we all have different kind of, you know, aspects and lights to us. Yeah. And the idea is that you want, in the people who come here, you want to bring out the individuality. You know, the idea is if you come to World Headquarters, the idea is you're supposed to be able to come in here as you are, and it's supposed to bring out your individuality. It's not supposed to suppress it. It's not like a fashion that you have to buy into. You don't have to shave your chest to come here or anything, or wear six-inch heels. You can't, but you could if you wanted to. You can if you want to, but it is, there, there is no uniform here. You know, the uniform is your face. You come as you are, you know? Mm, and, and you want to bring that out in people, and, and that, the, the, re, the reality of the human condition, I suppose, mm. is what we... What we're aspiring to sounds really pompous but yeah just really you know but that's what we are doing so yeah. I'm, I'm all right with saying that that's great well look can we can we go upstairs and we'll, we'll have a look upstairs as well a cookie before yes. we do. let's let's do that i hadn't mentioned that one please do yeah this is one of our uh, this is one of our more recent murals which is of the uh nigerian revolutionary and amazing sax player and orchestrator fella Kuti. Who, uh, who who died a while while back? His son Sean Cootie, uh, Femi Cootie. People know of it, know more of his sons than of him. And we wanted to paint a picture of him as a really big giant because he was a giant of a man. Right. And I put my dog Ronnie in the corner with, as well because they're the right. the two freest spirits I've ever encountered right. in my life. And that's a masterpiece painted by a guy called Joe Cutts, mm. who's done a lot of art here as well, who worked here. And that's one of the ones that that's one of my favourites. You know, really is it's a that is a masterpiece. Yeah. Fella Cootie, giant of a man. Fellow Cootie. I'm going to have to check him out. I think what's. You've got to check him. If you don't know Fellow Cootie, you've got to check him I out. I will. Fellow Cootie, I promise you. Yeah, I promise you. I will. Um, and what's interesting as well for those, those uh, viewers who, who, who aren't aware, as, as I haven't been, of some of these, uh, some of these figures and, and, and some of the, the, the wildlife, that it opens up a conversation that we can now find out about them and discover them and, and, yeah. and listen to the music. I'm going to yeah. maybe listen to some Frank Zappa as well. Check yeah, that for out. For sure, for sure. You know? I mean, one of the things on the new website, which we haven't done before, is we're going into detail on the murals on the, on the new website we're doing, whereby I 
I tell the story of every mural, who it is, what it is, who painted it, you know, all, all the ins and outs of them painting it. <laughs> Just it's because of quite funny stories behind them because it's really hard to, 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 to do something like that. It takes ages and it's only ever achieved by having me on your back going, come on, come on. <laughs> so, you know, we all look back on it fondly now, but at the time when you're painting a mural in here for me, it's a nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> well, be, be warned. Uh, aspiring artists out there who, who may want to come in, but you've been warned. So we've come over to the main DJ box and we have the world headquarters um, symbol. Would you call it a symbol or a logo? Yeah. That was the word I was looking I don't want to say, I don't want to say a brand logo. Uh, Newcastle on Time World Headquarters logo uniting all communities. So, you know, a, a white hand and a shaking a black hand. So could you tell us a little bit behind this and if uh, how you chose a design and, and, and maybe how it's evolved or, or has it stayed the same throughout the whole history of World Headquarters? It's, it's stayed exactly the same throughout the whole history of the club. That was what we put up there. This this actual piece here used to be on the front of the DJ box of the old club we had on Marlborough Crescent, which opened in 1993, and we sort of sawed it off when, when that building got demolished and put it up here, because that's our logo, that's what we want to represent, we want to unite all communities, and we don't just want to do that now, we want to do that then, you know, just at the end of the 80s when we just come through the house music explosion, the legal party thing, and we had a chance to open a club, that was what we wanted to do, and that's, you know... If I'm playing records, I always like give it a little kiss because yeah. that's what we're about. You know, that's what World Headquarters is, is supposed to represent, and that's why it's centre stage down here. Fantastic, thank you. Um, let's move upstairs. The posters in the foyer. Uh, that are up above represent all the clubs that we ran from back in the 80s when we were at Rock Shots, uh, through Carlisle, Edinburgh, all the different clubs that we ran, going right back, the, the big shows we put on when we put Nirvana on at the Mayfair, uh, just all the different things we've done. The, this down here is a sort of a, it just is, if you come in here, a lot of people won't even notice it, but if you look up, you can see the history of the club played out in, in visual form. And it's quite funny when you go back in time, you look at how basic some of the posters are. There's one Rock Shots poster around here, back from the letter set days, you know, when we used to make posters with letter set yeah. and you're transferring the things, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and it, yeah. it goes that far, it's that, that old school, that's how old school we are, we come like that, you know, yeah, yeah. And, we, and we come real. Love that. So we're upstairs into, into the, uh, into the, should we say the heart of the club? It depends on what floor you've got your event on. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So one of one of the many floors. This is the floor when I play here. This is the floor I usually play on when yeah. I play here. Yeah, yeah. It's got, there's a lot of energy and kind of just atmosphere to it. I think it's 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 it's, it's fantastic. We've got tables here, which I assume is a continent of Africa. If I'm looking at that correctly, you would, you would be correct in assuming that. <laughs> I'm standing in the right, right, uh, right, right uh, air direction to look at it. Um, Charles Darwin is, is I'm facing, and I didn't. I, again, it, it's it's another artist that I'm not aware of. So, would you, could you tell us a little bit about this artist? He introduced him to the viewers if they don't already know who he is, oh, is and why you've chosen Charles Darwin. Yeah, well, this is Curtis Mayfield, and obviously our whole building is called Curtis Mayfield House. Yeah. When, when we took it over. It was called British India House when we took it over. Right. And I didn't like that because of the connotations to empire and the rubber trade. Right. So I thought, well, we'll change the name. And I was going to go for either David Attenborough House or either Franklin House. But Curtis Mayfield had just passed recently. So I went for Curtis Mayfield House. And Curtis is one of the most inspirational artists of all time. Mm. You know, he recorded songs like Move On Up, We're a Winner. And in terms of the, the, the civil rights movement, he was a pivotal figure. But also just in terms of uplifting people through art that was what Curtis was all about mm -hmm. and I really wanted to honour Curtis so you know when we we, we spent a lot of time uh, again Joe Cutts did this one uh, he had a nightmare doing this it took him ages to do this one because I was never happy until it was absolutely it was Curtis Mayfield mm -hmm. and we took the line from move on up remember your dream is your only scheme so keep on pushing and when I'm playing records in the club I can look across and this lights up in neon at night I can look across and I always remember yeah that's what we're doing here that's yeah. what we're doing here you know yeah, we've got to yeah. get it together and, and that's just a really inspiring an inspiring mural it embodies the happiness of Curtis as well and the joy that he spread so yeah. it's one of my favorites that one and so and we've got Darwin obviously so you embrace the evolutionist theory and the idea that we've, we've we've evolved through the ages well, the, the, and the evolutionist theory isn't a theory it's reality you know people who tell you that dinosaurs are 4,000 years old are not correct <laughs> you know evolution is a real deal you know I can say that with my hand on my heart and I want to do this this is a picture that is up in the National Portrait Gallery of Charles Darwin that was painted by a guy called Teal Griffin and it's it's 
was a nightmare to paint because it had to be so realistic in the eyes and everything. And we spent ages on it. And it's a really, really good depiction of Charles Darwin. But the funny thing is, loads of people come in and don't know who it is. So they go, oh, is that Santa's day off? <laughs> it's like, you know, but it's one of those things you want to have in World Headquarters, the way we've evolved in the city. We want that Darwin as a key figure in our movement, you know, and, and we are very, very much aligned with Charles Darwin. And we are very, very much not aligned with any form of religious extremist, you know, be you Christian, Muslim, Jewish, whatever you are. If you've got a religion, that's great for you, but we don't have a religion. Music and people like Charles Darwin are our religion. Mm. That's, that's interesting, but, but, but you mentioned extremism, but, but it, that, not that you turn away those who have religious beliefs. No, you know, you can, but it's like, it says, it's like it says on our website, you know, black, white, gay, straight, religion or lack of it, you're all welcome here. Yeah. You know, everyone has got be has their own views that they put across, and a lot of people want to join a big organised group because it gives them a sense of being, and I can completely appreciate that, but I don't do that. I, I'm a free thinker, you know. Interesting. Well, let, let's move through the club. We're going to, oh, we ha can't move on without mentioning uh, the main man himself, Nelson Mandela. Um, so you've chosen to have, f for obviously with good reason, um, and to have the icon with the, with the candle there. Which is, the, is that the amnesty yeah. icon? Uh, sorry, uh, uh, logo. So, I mean, what, what can you say, really, what can be said, but I'm sure... Again, he's someone who's been sanitised. Uh, you know, he's seen as, oh, the great peacemaker, la, 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 which, is, which he was. But he yeah. also, he's up there because he was a revolutionary. Yeah. You know, he stood up yeah. against racism. Layers again. And he, and he gave his life against racism. And that's mm. the reason. He's not up there so people can, you know, go, oh, bless. You know, he's up there so people can go, you know, you know. Yeah. properly feel it and that's one of, one of the images in the club a lot of people get their photo taken and the loads of people come and they stand hey they want to get a bit of nelson you know mm -hmm. and because the club's been here for so long obviously when we first opened the club back in the 90s apartheid was all the rage you know margaret thatcher was calling him a terrorist and you know and he was still locked up and so over the course of time in the club playing records every weekend we've gradually seen the resistance movement build to the point whereby he was freed mm -hmm. and south africa went back in, into black majority rule and that was a journey we were on. Yeah. You know, the records we were playing, like Someday by C.C. Rogers, you know, a lot, a lot of the African stuff we played, we were on that journey. We were, you know, we were the people, some of the people in England who were going to set this motherfucker free, mm -hmm. you know, and so when he got free, it was a big deal for us. At mm -hmm. World Headquarters, it was a really, really big deal. And so that's why Nelson occupies the position that he does here. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're going to just step along here to the, to the main upstairs bar and, and we're going to finish on two key figures and two fantastic murals. One of the great Muhammad Ali, um, who, who's recognised as one of the greatest heavyweight champions in history, but also, as you mentioned before, uh, was you know a, a, a key figure uh, in, in a quality in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Um, yeah, I'm a Muhammad Ali fan, I would say. I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't say I agree with everything, but I agree with the vast majority of what he, what he stood for. But you, you'd mentioned that I mean, he's transcended boxing as a sport. Um, so what was the reason that you chose Muhammad Ali, not as a sportsman, but as an iconic key figure? Yeah, because I agree with everything that he stood for. Right. You know, I, I think that uh, coming up as he did and the way he did in the, in the situation he did in America and the stand yeah. he took against the Vietnam War, the stand against racism, yeah, uh, the way he's united the world, the fact that he embraced the nation of Islam and was willing to take his mind different places and yeah. try different things and be a go his own way. Mm. I really respect that. You know, people yeah. should be able to move through life and take different influences and change their opinions. Yeah. And to, to do that and come out as such a complete human being as he was at the yeah. end and be yeah. such a massive influence, it's, he's just, to me, he's probably the most iconic human being mm. Uh, mm. that I've ever had the pleasure of meeting his daughter, because I met his daughter. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Who, who fought as, 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 as which, which daughter? So I should cl clarify which daughter had you. Hannah. Hannah right. so, some friends of ours, uh, Bridge and Tunnel Films, who are based on the fourth floor here, right. they were making a documentary about when Muhammad Ali came over in 77. Right. Together, yes, in Newcastle, yeah. In, in South Shields. Yeah, yeah, sorry. And sorry. they ran out of money to make the film, so they, right. they came to me and I said, yeah, okay, I'll put some money into it. Mm. And I went with them across to Chicago to meet Ali. But when we got there to meet him, I think, it, I think what happened was a friend of his had died recently, so we had to go right. to the funeral, so he wasn't there. So we hung out with his daughter instead and saw his ranch and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was a nice moment. It was nice, nice as well to be able to help them complete that film. It's a great film. The King of South Shields, you should check it out. King, King of Sh is that on YouTube or is it? It'll be, it'll be on YouTube or, yeah. or you can get in touch with Bridge and Tunnel Productions. Nice. But it's, that's just something which we asked us to get involved in. Again, and pretty much like you did with this, an arts thing that they wanted us to get involved in. I said, yeah, yeah of course we will. We like the yeah. idea of that. So yeah. that was way back years ago, you know. Right. But, but Ali, you know, you can't argue with Ali. He's the man. My son loves Ali. 
He's a, he's a great, great, great figure. And I'm a, I'm a fan. Um, an interesting one, David Attenborough. You, you have a, a love for David Attenborough because you mentioned him a few times. You've got him on your wall. And I'm just wondering, uh, his connection, obviously, to animals and to conservation. I mean, he's, he's, a, uh, you know, he's a very recognized figure, certainly from my era, from the, the 80s when I, when I grew up. Um, so why, why did you choose to have him as one, next to Ali as well on, 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 the, uh, on the wall, on the club wall? Uh, this is one of the first murals we painted. Again, this was done by Sinead. And we wanted to, when people walk in the club, we want them to see what we're interested in and what, you know, I want people to know what, what we're all about. And, you know, you can listen to all the politicians you want, mm -hmm. but they're all lying to you. And David Attenborough's telling you the truth. You know, the world is in the middle of a mass extinction. Mm -hmm. You know, we do need to, to wise up and reflect that. Mm -hmm. And it's important for young people in their consciousness that they come into a nightclub and they go, well, you know, why is David Attenborough on the wall? You think mm -hmm. about it, because the guy's speaking the truth and we need to listen to him. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the natural world is the only resource we have. Mm -hmm. The financial system is a human construct. Mm -hmm. You know, politics are a human construct. But that one vision of him with the two gorillas, I don't know, it's just got a resonance to it of just nature and the lineage that human beings have and the responsibility that we have to the natural world. And I wanted to reflect that. And again, little did we know this is another one where everybody comes and gets their photo taken underneath it. They're all like kissing David and getting in with it. And it's an image that's become very synonymous with World Headquarters. Yeah. And I'm very pleased that when people see that image, they go, oh yeah, World Headquarters, yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, I love that. It's it's a it's a great image of of, of, of David Attenborough. Like I said, I grew. What was it called? It was on. Was it? B, it was BBC, wasn't he? Mainly, life on, earth. life on Earth. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, well, I think we should end with two um, important um, uh, pieces of of, 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 of wording. Love one another, which is underneath the main DJ box, and tolerance, which is underneath, I think, is a second DJ box up on the, on the top. Um, and I think love one another. Would that? Would you say that is the key phrase for world headquarters, or one of the key phrases? With it being located so centrally, it's certainly very much part of our message. When you walk in the club and you open yeah. the club and you stand there, you see a DJ, you hear music, it says "Love one another." It just sets a tone, you know. Yeah. It sets a yeah. tone for, for the way I want. It. If I'm going to play records, I want to play records to a room full of people who the first thing they came to came yeah. to the door, that was what they saw. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's part of the message we want to get out there, you know. Brilliant. And um, that's what we want to spread like, yes. a, like a virus. Yeah. That love. You know? <laughs> but as we drop down into the into the, uh, the, the, the 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 let's say the heart and soul now of the club. We come to an incredible graphic here with, with Bob Marley, which I hadn't realized that the dreadlocks are actually raised as well. So I'm assuming this one took the longest to, to, to do. I love the, the icon, icon either of the, of, the, um, of the sun, of the, the lion, the sheep, which, which I'm sure there's a, a, a little bit of history and, and reason behind. And then coming down into the burn with the, the snake and the rattlesnake, it looks like, and moles and uh, armadillo. So can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Uh, oh, and the volcano, I guess. It's a volcano with Marley. I don't know, as the lava I'm, I'm looking at, is that correct? Uh, well, it, it's based on the cover of, of the Bob Marley album, Uprising, right. uh, which has uh, so many great tunes on it. Yeah. But uh, we, again, it was this one that was done by Sinead way back in the day when we first opened. Yeah. And it was an epic, it did take ages. And, uh, you know, it, it took a very long time. And it was just really, you know, I thought, okay, we'll, we want to put something on the stairs, it's going to be a real showstopper. Mm. So we'll take a bit of time with it. And although we could have just had a bare wall and it wouldn't, you know, why, why spend ages and a fortune doing this? Because we wanted something that's an, a really iconic image. And I love it. I love, I love the, the way it sort of begins with dinosaur bones and, yes. you know, it comes up through reptiles and little moles and their little babies and armadillos that comes up through, well, because it's well, they're caught as we are Bob. The idea being that Bob Marley represents something yeah that is greater than Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. at World Headquarters, we are part of that thing. Yeah. We, are, yeah. we, are, we, are, we are not part of fashion. We are not part of, you know, whatever anybody else is doing. We are part of that thing mm -hmm. that he represents and say that the Tune Redemption song. We are in that record. Yeah. You know, World Headquarters yeah. Club is in that record. Yeah. And then on top of that, there's the humour of it, which was the little sheep with the teats yeah. and the lion with his big balls and that, you know, these yeah. are all little, they took ages. I missed the balls, actually. <laughs> it took ages to do, you know, you've got your insects, yeah. all your larvae and that. And it was yeah, just, yeah. just a really self-indulgent piece of art, the idea that you create art because you want to make something look beautiful, you mm -hmm. want to represent something, and you want to push it as far as you can. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a great work. It's one of the things that really, rep when people think of World well, Headquarters, many people think of this. Again, it's another one. Lots of people mm -hmm. get their photo taken under. You know? I, it's a nice thing to have. It's just a nice 
beautiful thing to have. You know? It is. I, I love the way you could spend quite a bit of time just looking at it and following it up and, and, and looking at things that you would miss as you, if you were yeah, to walk well, by. That's the same with all the art. Most people just stumble past it, pissed on their way to hear the music. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to spend time, it, 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 there's a lot deeper you can go with what they're yeah. you know, there's, there's a lot to see and a lot to learn if you want to spend the time. But if you don't, you just want to come and enjoy the music, you can do that too. Love it. So we're going to end on a high. We've come towards the end of the visit to World Headquarters. Um, and we're going to, end, as I said, end on a high with Public Enemy. Uh, I, I mentioned before one of my son's favourite groups and, and, and certainly a favourite of yours, Tom. On, on the interview, you'd mentioned how you'd, you'd followed Public Enemy around uh, the UK. Without Public Enemy, there would be no World HQ. So I, I know that this one is important to you. Could you tell us a little bit about this, this graphic and what, what it means to you and Public Enemy in particular? Yeah, this is the cover of the Nation of Millions album, uh, which was a, probably one of the founding fundamental records in my life. Mm. Uh, Public Enemy, when they first came out, I followed them all over the place. Wherever they came here, I saw them in Amsterdam. I saw them, uh, you know, the last show when they were all together at Brixton Academy. You know, I was just a massive PE fan. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I was a bit of a sto PE stalker because there'd never been anything like Public Enemy. Yeah. And that idea of, at the time, you know, of they really, really raised black consciousness and brought it into the mainstream. And this is before... You know, you got into all this gangster rap and all this stuff that's kind of that's diluted hip hop now. And hip hop was a real force for social change. Yes. And it wasn't just about the size of your car or how many girls you'd fucked. Right. It was proper consciousness. Mm -hmm. And Public Enemy embodied that. And I loved their music because it was so dense and intense. Mm -hmm. And there was so much to hear in it. And it was just such an exciting time. And also, what they did was, as a young man, Public Enemy very much reversed for me much of the feel that that sort of oppressive feeling of racism that I felt living in Newcastle at the time and coming up through the comprehensive school system in the 70s and, and uh, public enemy just turned it all on its head and it was you know black pride unity and very very uncompromising but the idea that you know you can be strong and compromising and go your own way and without them there wouldn't be a world headquarters because I would never have had the determination to put it together it was uh, following bands like public enemy and hip hop music positive hip hop music that really uh, gave me the insight that it was possible to achieve anything if you just push hard enough. And so that's a great way to end. And I, 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 uh, I encourage any, any viewer, uh, if you have a Spotify account and you've got YouTube, go listen to some Public Enemy. For, uh, I mean, I know Fight the Power is probably one of the, 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 the most well-known. I think that's, that, for me, is one of, the, one of their greatest tunes. If you had to pick one Public Enemy... <laughs> <laughs> Can I do it? If you had to pick one, maybe two Public Enemy. Uh, is not, not your best tracks, but maybe ones that really inspired you. And Bob Marley as well. Obviously, one of the greats, Bob Marley. If you could pick, could, could you pick, could you choose one Bob Marley track and one Public Enemy track? Not as your favorite ones, but ones you'd recommend uh, viewers who haven't heard any of their, their, their music to listen to. And maybe one that has a deep message for you and World Headquarters as a whole. God, you, I, I, you put me on the spot. I, I, I'll do something different. I'll pick, pick a public enemy trap that I think has a real resonance today, which is she watched Channel Zero off, off the Nation of Millions album, which it kind of uh, reflects the idea of people sitting down, watching nonsense on television and learning nothing, you know, imagining that the, 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 their Instagram profile is their real profile and the idea of, you know, you're watching Channel Zero, man. What you want to be doing is you want to be waking up. And that was an album that woke everybody up, so I'll pick that one. If you haven't heard that, that's a great beat. Bob Marley, Jesus Christ, there's so many. Uh, I don't know, let me think of one that is a little bit off the wall. I suppose it's not that off the wall, but Natural Mystic, I think, would be the one, because it, I love the way it's, it begins. It sort of comes in like the seasons, or blows in like a breeze, you know, it sort of fades in, and it just is so deep, and it's so... Uh, it's just so Bob. And I, I just, I love the way it comes in, the way it just, it comes in like if you were lying on the beach and you felt a warm breeze come over you, natural mystic comes over you like that. And it's not one of the, it's not a sort of club hit, but you know, we play it here, but it's, it's not a club hit, but it's one that I would, if I had to recommend one of each, I'd say, she watched Channel Zero, natural mystic. Okay. And if you had to pick between Bob Marley and Public Enemy, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Tom. <laughs> Tom. Thank you. Thank you for today. Thanks for your time. I know you're a busy man uh, and I look forward to seeing you again on the first live show, which will be episode 16. But we might start at, we might start point one again and, and, and go from episode one at World. I think we should do that. We should start from scratch as, as, as uh, you welcome us into World Headquarters. Thank you very much for your time today. And I look forward to seeing you soon as a first guest on the first show. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.